Good morning, everyone. Our entrance antiphon is as follows. <clears throat> Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I cry to you all the day long. <clears throat> Excuse me. O Lord, you are good and forgiving, full of mercy to all who call to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My brothers and sisters, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Um, we have a special guest with us these days, Father Bart Della Torre, who is a Dominican priest who was assigned here in the 1990s, I believe. Yes, and is now in our mission parish in Mexicali. So we're um, blessed to have Father Bart with us. He's been in the missions for 16 years. So he's been a, a missionary down there for a long time. So let us ask the Lord to fill us with his love, mercy, and goodness as we begin our Mass together today. And we pray together, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all of our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Concerning times and seasons, brothers and sisters, you have no need for anything to be written to you, for you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief at night. When people are saying, peace and security, then sudden disaster comes upon them, like labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness, for that day to overtake you like a thief. For all of you are children of the light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as the rest do, but let us stay alert and sober. For God did not destine us for wrath, but to gain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up, as indeed you do. The word of the Lord. I believe that I shall see the good things of the Lord in the land of the living. The Lord is my light and my salvation. 
Whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom should I be afraid? One thing I ask of the Lord, this I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, that I may gaze on the loveliness of the Lord and contemplate His temple. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage. Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus went down to Capernaum, a town of Galilee. He taught them on the Sabbath, and they were astonished at his teaching because he spoke with authority. In the synagogue, there was a man with the spirit of an unclean demon, and he cried out in a loud voice, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Be quiet, come out of him. Then the demon threw the man down in front of them and came out of him without doing him any harm. They were all amazed and said to one another, What is there about his word? For with authority and power he commands the unclean spirits, and they come out. And news of him spread everywhere in the surrounding region. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, this Gospel is the beginning of Jesus' public ministry in Luke's Gospel. Um, And he goes to Capernaum, which will be his headquarters in the region of Galilee. And he begins uh, with power and authority, very impressive. He preaches in in a way that moves his his hearers. He uh, casts out a demon from a man who's possessed. So, and people again are astounded, but something does not happen. Something is, is, is not working the way it's supposed to because in just a few chapters, Jesus will condemn Capernaum. These people who, this very day who say, wow, this guy's amazing. Woo, isn't it impressive? But he says uh, later on, he says that Capernaum will be thrown down because you have not changed. You have not repented. They're impressed by what he does, but it doesn't move them to a deeper faith. It doesn't cause them to to question themselves, to open their hearts to him, to grow in their their love of God. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be a Capernaum. I don't want to uh, be unaware of, of what God is doing in my life today and every day. And that should be a constant prayer for us. As St. Paul said in the first reading, be awake, stay vigilant. Jesus says the same thing. And all the great religions of the world say the same thing. Be awake, be vigilant, be aware. Open your eyes to see 
what God is doing in your life. And don't just say, wow, that's a beautiful sunset. Wow, pretty nice. God, thanks for hearing my prayers. Good job, you know. God, I'm so impressed by what you do. So what? Do something about it. Let it move you. And it's for us religious people especially that this can be so true. Those people in Capernaum, they were in the synagogue. They probably went to the synagogue all the time. And yet something kept them from opening themselves to God. They maybe, with their religious observance, they created a certain comfort zone. Wow. Again, they could be impressed by Jesus, but his miracles weren't about impressing anybody. His miracles were to, to move people to, uh, to an openness, to, to an awareness of what he wanted for them and from them, a relationship. And so often you and I can be so comfortable in the way that we celebrate or come to Mass and do our prayers. We have this kind of a comfort zone of this is what I do as a Catholic and just stay there. But Jesus is always trying to get us to move from our comfort zone to someplace new, someplace deeper, someplace further along in our walk with the Lord. And if our religion, in some ways, our faith, the Lord is not challenging us in some way, making us uncomfortable to, to open ourselves up to something new, then, then, then our religion is not working out. It's not doing what it's supposed to be. We're like Capernaum. We're, we're just not quite there. You and I have a chance every day to grow in some way, to see what God is doing right here, right now. And it's not just to impress us. It's, it's always to help us change, to repent. Jesus says over and over again, to be converted. And that just, just, doesn't just happen once. It happens again and again and again in our lives, to move forward in our walk with the Lord to repent and to open ourselves more fully to him. And now we stand and offer our prayers to the Lord this day. Lord, we thank you for the many wonderful things you have done in our lives to help us, heal us, to uh, help us... Uh, be aware of your presence to help us grow. May we always have open eyes and open ears to hear you speaking to us, to draw us further, deeper into your heart. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those in our world uh, who, for whatever reason, are not able, not aware, not vigilant to see God's acting in their lives, especially for loved ones who no longer practice their faith. May they see and, and feel God's presence in their lives and draw closer to him. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our world that continues to struggle with fires and floods, natural disasters, and human disasters of violence and oppression. We pray in a special way for those who are affected in our own country, our own state, as well as those in Haiti and other areas that are suffering in Afghanistan, again, that are facing an uncertain future. For God's assistance for the countries of the world to work together to bring uh, justice and peace to people, we pray to the Lord. Lord Our Mass this morning is especially offered for the repose of Vicente Sai S.Y. and Rosemarie Sai Sherman. Uh, for their repose and for their loved ones, we pray to the Lord. We pray for blessings upon our community, Dominican community in Mexicali, Father Bart and the other Dominicans that are there with him, that they would prosper in their ministry and continue to serve the people with dedication. We pray to the Lord. And for your prayers this day that we lift up to God in a moment, uh, in a few moments of silence. For all these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, we thank you for the many ways you work in our lives. May we always be aware of your loving presence. We make our prayers through Christ our Lord. Please be seated.
I invite you to sing a song that we've sung many times, Open My Eyes. If you need the words, it's number 393 in your books, 393, Open My Eyes, Lord. Open my eyes, Lord, help me to see your face. Open my eyes, Lord, help me to see. Open my ears, open my ears, Lord. Help me to hear your voice. Open my ears, Lord. Help me to hear. Open my heart. Open my heart, Lord. Help me to love like you. Open my heart, Lord. Help me to love. I live within you. I live within you. Deep in your heart, O oh love, I live within you. Rest now in me. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this our sacrifice and that we ourselves might be acceptable to our loving and almighty God. May this sac sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery it may accomplish in power, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the Most Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles, warriors, martyrs, our Holy Father Dominic, and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Jose our Bishop, the order of bishops and all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion O merciful Father gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. We stand once again and we pray in the words that Jesus, our Savior, taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. Now let us safely offer to one another a sign of peace. Peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace.
My brothers and sisters, behold Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And once again, we'll say together the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present. I love you above all things. And I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, <clears throat> come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives.